So what we're going to show here is the first uh, area, which is the, uh, the inventory. We'll go ahead and create certificate stores uh, uh, on, the, uh, or on, the, uh, on the command server. In this case, we're going to, create, we're going to add uh, – the first thing we'll add will be the um, uh, F5 web server. This represents the certificate that's going to go on the F5 server. We'll create a container, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. We'll enter the F5 server name in order to uh, connect to that via the API. We'll provide, again, the credentials. Uh, we'll pick SSL to communicate with it, and we'll enter the credentials here. You can see that we're going to add the uh, username here and the password later, but these also could be loaded from a PAN provider like CyberArk or Psychotic. So we'll enter the, the, the password, confirm it, and save this information. That will be stored in a secrets database or in the PAN provider should you choose. We'll then pick the orchestrator that we have in our environment, two orchestrators. We'll pick the one that's on this key factor uh, command server, and then we'll set an interval schedule for that, uh, um, uh, for that, uh, that uh, uh, certificate store. We'll then go through the second one and pick the F5 uh, SSL profiles, which represent a specific, uh, uh, pro, uh, 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 a specific partition that's on the F5. In this case, we'll call it a F5 common. Again, that partition is, or that uh, um, container is a way of grouping uh, certificate stores. In this case, we're going to call it an F5 common. We'll enter the client machine name again. This time, we will just have to save this because it's our, this, the information has already been entered. Uh, we'll enter the store path, which represents the partition that we're going to target with this certificate. And we'll pick the orchestrator again and the inventory schedule again. Again, the inventory schedule is how often the, the orchestrator will connect to a command to get uh, its jobs. So what we'll go do now is take a look at the orchestrator jobs uh, uh, status, and what we'll find is the scheduled jobs that have been scheduled based on us putting in these certificate stores or the F5 server and the common partition right there, and again, running every minute. Now, since we've, since we've actually done that, a minute has gone by, so we'll go back to the uh, certificate locations, certificate stores, and we'll go ahead and right-click on the, uh, um, the uh, common partition and view inventory, and that'll view the certificates that are on the F5. It'll bring back, like I said, the default bundle that's on the, uh, the F5 by default, as well as the top certificate there you can see, which I uh, entered before, the 0402. And uh, so those certificates are now in our inventory database and can be interacted with. What we'll now show is the, the enrollment side of this, where we pick a specific template representing a CA. In this case, you can see we have DigiCert, NTrust, and Microsoft uh, web servers. We'll enter the common, inf uh, common name as, uh, uh, for, as test.demodrive.com. The other, uh, the other fields will be automatically uh, uh, put in uh, based on our system settings. Uh, we'll, by default, put in the same uh, DNS uh, uh, subject alternative names. We can put uh, certificate metadata, and we'll go ahead and install this directly into a store. There's the F5 common uh, 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 container that we talked about before, which is how we group the F5 uh, common partition. And then we'll go ahead and select that and overwrite it and put the, use the alias the same as the common name, which would allow the person on the F5 to see those, those, uh, uh, those certificates in the partition. We'll go ahead and enroll this. And you can see that enrollment has been successful. We'll go check the orchestrator and uh, look for the job that was submitted by command. And there it is, the F5 uh, uh, common partition. You can see it's, it's been immediately uh, uh, submitted. And then the orchestrator, every one minute, will pull, will pull back and uh, uh, look to, to take that job off the queue. In this case, we're going to refresh it. It's not yet quite done. It'll take a, a, a couple seconds here. Refresh again. And there we go. Uh, it's taken it off the queue. And we'll check the job history to see what happened. And if we look at that, that immediate job has completed successfully. Now we'll go ahead and log into the F5 and validate that that uh, uh, certificate has been sent over to the common partition. We'll log in. We'll go over to the system area into the certificate management, SSL certificate list. And I think this is the 11 certificate, so we'll pull down the second page. And there's the test.demodrive.com. The, the you can see it's got the key factor test drive uh, CA2, which means it was the Microsoft CA that had uh, uh, issued that certificate. 
We'll go back to our search, and we can see the top of that certificate right on top of our, our list right here. And you can see that uh, the location is F5. F5 is, is, there's one F5 uh, certificate. And if we double-click on here, we can actually go and look at that certificate. We can see the, uh, um, the metadata fields as well as the uh, certificate fields. Uh, this is kind of a single pane of glass. We can go in and look at the location where it shows that, yes, there's, the, uh, uh, there's one certificate in the common parti uh, uh, partition, test.demodrive.com. Okay. What we'll do now is we'll, uh, we'll show how we could actually go and uh, renew that certificate. You can right-click in the admin portal and do things like revoke, delete, private key, download. But we're going to go ahead and renew that. And we can hit continue, which would actually go and renew that certificate with the Microsoft CA, or we can configure that and change things. We can change uh, metadata, or we can pick another template. In this case, we're going to pick the Entrust standard template. And uh, you can see down at the bottom, it installs into existing locations, whether it was in one or five locations. And we'll go ahead and enroll that. And that, should, that will uh, 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 go to the Entrust certificate, find out what that certificate was require, required, and send a new certificate from Entrust. And that completed successfully. We'll go check the orchestrator jobs. And there's the immediate job that was entered. We'll do a quick refresh. And see that job come off the queue. Go ahead and check the job history. And that, that job is in fact there. It's been immediate, it's immediate and it's been completed successfully. So let's go back to the big IP device and see what's happened to that certificate. So We'll go, go back out and uh, come back into the certificate management uh, section, the SSL list, and take a look at the certificate. And you can see the Entrust certificate has replaced the old Microsoft certificate. So we've, we've now replaced it and uh, renewed it. Now, we've done that through the admin portal, but it's important to note that that could have been done through an expiration alert where we could have said two weeks before this expires, go ahead and renew the certificate with a different CA. So that's a way we can address migrations or just uh, moving to an, a different type of uh, maybe key size on a, on a certificate. So you can see the Entrust Certificate Authority is the one that issued this. Um, and it's important to note also that, that we have the ability to put these certificates there. Uh, profiles can, be, can re refer to the certificate, and virtual servers can refer to those profiles. And when I renew that certificate, the bindings don't have to be changed. So uh, we don't have to worry about the bindings uh, uh, being broken because we renewed the certificate. So I just wanted to walk through the, the couple of different scenarios to, for connecting F5 to the command server.